My guest today is Paul Stevens Fulbrook. He is a high school science teacher in England who, in his own words, teaches at 100 miles an hour and in the st- service of student engagement, can be found leaping from desks, making up songs about science to stick in students' heads forever, and doing a famous bee impression to explain how pollination works. His side hustle is that he moonlights as an education blogger where he supports other teachers on topics like classroom management, classroom technology, teaching tips, and teacher well-being. Paul, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. You're welcome. Excited to be here. All right. I would love to first just start off by jumping in to understand a little bit about what is your solopreneur business about? Can you just help us understand uh, what you're working on? Yeah, um, I'm working on my website, teacherofsci.com. Um, and it's kind of a one-stop place for teachers to come with uh, queries or worries and woes where they can come and find answers and, and hopefully go away with some actionable tips, be it with their stuff in the classroom or, or stuff in their home life. So that's that's really where we're at with that. It's um, Got a place it. for teachers to find help. Got it. So if I'm a teacher... Uh, how, like, what are the kinds of things that I would want to come to your site to uh, get more information about? Like, where, where am I in my life as a teacher uh, or in my job as a teacher that would, com- that would uh, spark that initial interest to come to your site to get information? Um, in some ways, uh, desperation in that <clears throat> you run out of patience with a class or, or you or you're struggling to get the behavior management right in a class, or you're just looking for um, fresh tips in the classroom, or that you're struggling with cash a bit, or you're struggling with your physical and mental well-being, and that you come to the site and there's plenty of articles on there to to help you out. So it's really aimed at any teacher anywhere. Um, We all seem to suffer from the same um, problems and struggles, so I figure that if it's something that I've struggled with, then there'll be other teachers out there who will need help in that area. I see. Is there a particular profile of teacher that you have found uh, particularly comes to your site and, and looks for information there? Um, a lot of new teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of new teachers or trainee teachers do come to the website. But then I, I do often get, a slightly older, more experienced teacher come, especially with the well-being stuff when they've been in the job a while and are just struggling with the pressure of it. And I get a, quite a lot of feedback from that kind of teacher, especially with the well-being stuff. Got it. How do you help a teacher on well-being? Um, well, the well-being stuff is pretty much, I, I base most of the articles in in the well-being section on things that I've struggled with. Um whether it's stress and anxiety, either in the classroom or just in general life, or um, depression, bits and pieces on that. I've just for those ones, I've kind of told my story a little bit, but I've also got um, other experts to write uh, articles on certain things, like working working for a bully boss, that kind of thing. Someone where you just working for this person and nothing nothing you do is right um so i got a friend of mine who's a psychologist to write a couple of articles for me on that so yeah it's pretty much from my own experiences and from experiences of those close to me i see how did you get started with this like where did the idea come from and if there was a a a moment of realization when you realized like you needed to do this what was what motivated that um the idea kind of started about two or three years ago. I, I knew I had to do something else, something in addition to teaching, because I'd sat down and worked out um, how much my pay would increase over over years and whether that would ever leave me and my wife and children comfortable. And it wasn't good maths. <laughs> it, it didn't look good. So I knew I had to do something. And I, I, I toyed with the idea of writing a book about kind of a day in the life of a teacher, um, just write kind of a, a, a small chapter every day. And that was one idea that had been mulling around. And then I was driving to work one day, listening to podcasts, not necessarily about blogging, just listening to podcasts. And I thought, I should do something a bit like this. So I, I came home from work that day and started investigating. And suddenly the, the idea of 
I should have a blog. I should have a website because I visit those websites for help. Maybe I should do that. That would give me the opportunity to write and be a bit more creative. But it's also something that doesn't require such a large amount of time. Or so I thought the, uh, writing a book would do. And I figured, well, we'll, we'll give give that a go. Naively, I think I I followed some of the more optimistic adverts that you see on the internet of overnight riches and thought that's the one I'll be a millionaire but in six months time I didn't really think that but that kind of thing um but yeah it's, it's it's been a project that's come together and grown and grown and grown but that was the driving to work one morning when I thought I know what I should do I should do something like a podcast or a blog and, and that's where the idea came from gotcha when you uh, decided or realized that you know you wanted to start um, uh, start a side hustle to create a blog. Did you do it with the you know the the intent to monetize it from the very beginning, or did you think you know I'll just see you know what this is about. I'll create some uh, maybe some content and then you know figure it out along the way. I don't know if it's going to turn into a business, uh, but I just kind of want to understand a little bit better how it works like which of the two was it um <clears throat> it was if i'm being honest it was i need to make some extra money this seems like a good idea but also i'll be helping out other teachers along the way um because my idea was that <clears throat> the things i could put on the website were things i struggle with i thought that that they're, they're the kind of things that seem to be most teachers struggle with so Ideally, I'll make some money and be able to help out other people. I see. How did you anticipate in the very beginning? How did you think about monetizing the website? What was, what were your plans to do so? Um, initially, I only had the idea of putting some ads on there and seeing how that worked. Um, but then, over the course of the next few months and years, I I researched a lot more about other ways to go about things, and and I've just been kind of tinkering with the ideas and, and trying trying to work out a few other bits. But the, it's still early, very early days, but we, we're, we're getting somewhere. It's progress. Gotcha. So today, now, it's been a few years since you started the website. How? What are the ways that you're monetizing currently? Um, the majority of the income does come from ads. It's not a huge amount, but it, it does come in from ads. I also review education books for a couple of publishers um so income comes in from that um there's the aff affiliate sales um for amazon and a couple of other bits and pieces and i have got a couple of products well i've got one of my own products up for sale on the website what is that it's a revision guide that i wrote to help students who are coming up to exams to teach them how to study um, so that that's on there. So there's a few different things, and I've got a few other bits and pieces. Um, sometimes we get a sponsored post come in, but I'm not 100% keen on having sponsored posts on the site. But they're another income stream stream if I need it. Gotcha. Say more about the sponsored posts. What uh, what is your concern about them? Um, I'm I'm very conscious of the fact that they are someone's agenda, a company's agenda. So. If I choose to put one on the site, it has to be really helpful for my audience. Um, I do get quite a lot of pitches about sponsored posts, and the majority I have to turn down. It would be ideal to get the money, but you know, my my number one priority is making sure whatever goes on the site is useful to my audience. Sure. How do you do ads? Like, what tools do you use to implement <laughs> ads? Well, I have been using uh, Google AdSense up until about a month ago, where I um, where where I decided to switch over to another ad network. I'm, I'm now using Ezoic. Um, Ezoic. I haven't heard of that one. How do you spell e that one? E Z O I C. Oh, Ezoic. Um, so they they seem to do a lot better than Google Ad Google AdSense. Um, my revenue from that is gone up about it's very early days it takes a while for the, the system to work out how your website's working and what your visitors prefer but my income from that has probably gone up two to three hundred percent oh wow 
Yeah. What what, what is it that you reckon they do differently than um, Google AdSense? I think that the people pay more for their ads. Mm. I, I believe there's there's a lower limit of how you how many visitors per month you should have to qualify for it. It's like ten thousand unique visitors a month, um, whereas AdSense you can have from the beginning. Um, so that I think that's one that they pay more because they know there's bigger audience out there. But I just think they're they've got a kind of an AI system that learns your visitors' preferences. So it takes a while to move ads around and work out what's working best. But it does seem to be be, be very fruitful at the moment. I see. Well, what are your traffic numbers right now? Um, well, last month I had my record month so far. Um, it was in the region of, it's just shy of 18,000 unique visitors a month and 40-something thousand page views. So it's it's not massive yet, but it's certainly heading in the right direction. For sure. And so it sounds like uh, that's definitely well within the territory that uh, it would start to be able to get good ad monetization from uh, the ad network that you mentioned, Ezoic, right? Did I get that yeah. right? Okay, gotcha. Um, cool. What are the um, uh, what 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 things have you been able to do that have been effective and successful at growing your traffic? Like, what are some of the strategies that have really worked for you? Um, well, like most bloggers, I think at the beginning I was just trying to do everything everywhere, all the social media everything but i've really kind of streamlined it to what works best um for me i get a lot of traffic from facebook it's not ideal but i do get a lot of traffic from facebook not ideal because it's facebook is very fickle it'll, it'll love you one day and then ban you the next day in fact i'm i'm in facebook jail at the moment i don't know why oh i, I, I shared i shared my latest post to several facebook groups that i'm in and on Friday, and I got a, a message to say you're you can't post to Facebook groups for three days. So I think I, I, I used the word please share. Please, I used the word please share this um, in in the in the post, and I, I don't think they like that very much. So Facebook's very fickle, but I get I get a lot of traffic from Facebook. Next, it's um, organic traffic from Google and Bing um, and others, but mainly mainly Google. Uh, Bing's been quite good lately, but uh, yeah, so second will be uh, organic. And then referrals uh, from links on other sites. And I've got my email um, email list that I've been building over the last year and a half. So that goes out and that brings in some as well. I see. How, how many folks are on your email list currently? Just uh, 1,700 and a few. Gotcha. Uh, so I've never heard this term Facebook jail. Uh, can you say more about uh, what it means to, you know, get sent to Facebook jail and uh, what happens, like what causes that to happen and what can you do about it, if anything? Um, I'm not 100% sure why I've been. This is the only, the only time I've been sent to Facebook jail. Um, Instagram do a similar thing as well, where I, I've got quite a big following. Um, but if you do something that, kind of bends their terms and conditions without you know breaking them completely um then they can give you a temporary ban on posting things in groups that don't belong to you which is what's happened to me um but it, it's not i didn't try anything to do do anything dodgy it's just there's so many uh, rules that you have to follow that you aren't very accessible to learn how which what they are so i think the because i've one of the biggest drivers of traffic to the site is I joined a lot of relevant Facebook groups. Um, so lots and lots of teaching Facebook groups. And every Monday and every Friday, I'll share a post in, in, in those. And that works very well. Um, for, for some reason, this time when I shared them on Friday, they, they weren't keen on it. <laughs> Even though it was, it was a post about uh, mental health recovery from depression and stress something i wrote about myself so i don't think it's the content i just think they don't like it if you if you want if you request people to keep sharing it everywhere i don't i think that's where i went wrong with that one interesting so it sounds like uh, so you alluded to this a moment ago around how facebook has been effective for you 
around mm-hmm. joining a bunch of groups. Um, yeah. But for somebody who say, you know, Facebook is obviously a very par- powerful marketing platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, for somebody who is just getting started with a side hustle and they think maybe their audience is on Facebook, what are some of the steps they could do? White hat steps, not black hat, but yeah, what are yeah. some of the white hat steps that they could do to build an audience at, on, on Facebook? Um, well, the, f- the first thing they need to really do is, is create their own page and their own then their own group, um, and they're a bit slower build. Uh, ideally, I mean, I only try and do white. I know it sounds. I know I just said I'm in Facebook jail, but that's just from white hat stuff, not not anything dodgy. Um, but the first, the primary things they should have their own page and definitely their own Facebook group, and all the time they're trying to build those up, they should join uh, pay attention to other facebook pages within their niche join other facebook groups within their niche and be active in those other groups so help out not necessarily self promote hugely when you first start because you haven't got a lot to self promote with but definitely get into those facebook groups and start answering questions and people answering questions and helping other people out and then that build up a bit of a reputation in there that, that oh there's this guy knows what he's talking about and then when you start posting, sharing your own posts in there, people are more likely to come because you've already helped them out. So it's build a relationship first rather than just go into groups and start spamming them with stuff because that's a surefire way to get yourself in trouble. For sure. And then you mentioned that you have a quite a large following on Instagram. How, <laughs> what are the you know the main ways that someone should be thinking about to uh, build their following on Instagram? Um, <clears throat> be uh, consistent in, in your posting um, there's a lot of hacks and things out there where, where people are offering to buy followers that don't do that it's going to get you banned there's a lot of this follow me and I'll follow you back and then that kind of stuff and, and you just mass follow lots of people, and then when they start following you, you unfollow them, and that's that's not going to work either. That I mean, I tried that to start with, and you just get people who aren't interested in what you're doing. They're, they're, you're much better off having a small amount of followers who are interested in what you're doing, rather than this massive number of followers, none of which care about what you're doing. And um, so it's not going to help you out at all. So just be consistent in what you're posting, and posting um, helpful, useful things. Um, Instagram doesn't drive a lot of traffic to the website, but it really does seem to um, create this culture of it's a bit more fun. It's people will enjoy what you do, and you build up a bit of a, 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 a build up a bit of a notoriety in being an interesting person. So it's really more about you rather than the website. So you drive the engagement through being yourself and then hopefully the traffic and the interest and the following will will build. I Um, see. Uh, What type of content do you post on Instagram that you have found to be effective? So I've recently taken on someone um, to help to do my Instagram account for me. Um, It's actually an an ex-student from a long time ago who wants to get into social media marketing. So she's handling all my posts and we've, we've streamlined it down. She's much better at designing things than I am. But so we post once a day on the, Insta, on the, on the Instagram feed where we'll do um, usually an education quote and then we'll do, then we'll, the next one will be a, a blog post that we're sharing and the next one will be a meme or something. It's, it's called our other category. It'll either be a meme or um, a silly picture of me or any other news that comes up. Uh, like recently I was made a finalist in a blog awards and we put that up as one but then we do the stories as well to go with it so she'll do a couple of stories promoting what we've put on the feed but I'll, I'll also go on there daily and talk gibberish and, <laughs> and usually try and create a bit of interest there and, it, and that's been much more helpful because I having someone to do it for me I mean not everyone can do that but it, but it's she can she's excellent at designing the posts and now they are looking like I wanted them in my head but don't have the ability to do um so I can just sit back and talk rubbish into the stories and and she can design them so consistent stuff 
that looks good. There's so many th- things out there on, on Instagram. It's difficult to get noticed. So you you do need to make sure what you're putting out there is looks visually good because you've got about a second to grab people's attention as they're scrolling through. And when, if you stick to the same format, then people will start to see, start to recognize it when it comes up and, and pay a bit more attention to it. Oh, I see. So you have a few different types of templates of content that you will use consistently. Yeah, we do. We, so it's about trying to design the feed so it looks organized. So if you look at my Instagram feed, you'll see a column of blog post things and then a column of memes or silly things and then a column of education quotes, all with my branding on, all with the, the, the same color scheme I use on the website. So it's, it's all linked in all over the place but it's got to look it's got to look professional for people to stop if it's just random stuff people are just going to skim past it you mentioned also that google has been uh you know important source of traffic for you what are some of the best practices you have found to uh be effective at getting google traffic this 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 is a constant constant learning curve and battle um google traffic has been building consistently for the last um, maybe nine months it's been building up and up and up and up and I think it's it's down to writing good content that people will engage with that people will use um, you can read six million SEO tactics out there and trying to work out what what you should be using and what you shouldn't it is very difficult especially when you've come into this blind like I did never having done anything like this before but I think right consistent for me, long form posts work well. I try not to post anything that's under 2,000 words. Now, 1,500 to 2,000 is probably the minimum I'll try and put on there, unless it's a book review. Um, so long form posts, really making sure that what you're putting on there is interesting, that people aren't just going to come on, read the first bit and, and go away again. So breaking up the text into very short paragraphs, because these days no one has a good... <laughs> Uh, concentration span, um, trying to put interesting things in it, even if it's just a small paragraph, which is got the same color background as the rest of your site. So just to break it up a little bit. Um, ask for engagement as well. Ask questions within the content that will keep people reading and want to comment on those kind of things, I think, is consist- is making it consistently good. Yeah. Have you, you-, you can... You can write for the algorithms if you want, but then your content is is not going to be great. You can try and, I mean, keyword stuffing and all that doesn't work anymore anyway, but you can try and beat the system, but you're never going to beat the system when the system is Google. So right. if you're writing things that people want to read, then it might take longer to get where you need to be, but you will get there. Have you also found other you know, platforms like Pinterest to be helpful for building traffic? Yeah, Pinterest does work very well. I do use Pinterest. I have used Pinterest. Um, but for me at the moment, this is one of the things I've learned is to streamline, to make sure I'm just doing things which are going to be effective for me. And Pinterest is effective, but it takes time. And at the moment, as a father of four and a full-time teacher and a blogger and everything else in between, I, I needed to take a step back from Pinterest. I will go back into it one day when I've got a bit more time, but at the moment it's, it takes a lot of time to, for me to do. As I said, I'm rubbish at designing things, so to design a pin for me takes quite a while. It yeah. wasn't before. Definitely. I, yeah, I think that's one of the big things that I have found in talking with lots of folks is to you know find what you're good at and yeah. focus like a laser beam on doing that uh, that's better than spreading yourself thin across a whole bunch of different platforms, but kind of doing each one so-so. Yeah, that, that that's the biggest thing I've learned over the last year is what works for me, do that. Um, like I said, Facebook works for me. I get a lot of engagement from Facebook, so I've been focusing my energy on Facebook and organic traffic. Um, Instagram I do work on, like I said, it, it doesn't bring a lot of traffic, but it does build engagement. So for me, that's... Um, that's an area I like to work on, but it doesn't. I know I'm not going to get a lot of traffic to the site from it. But it's all about building the brand, having your brand out there in in multiple platforms. So they're the three I really work on most: um, Facebook, organic traffic, and Instagram. 
Pinterest does work, but it's not a, it's not a good balance for me, time wise. So currently, how much money is your uh, website bringing in? Um, it's getting bigger. We're probably bringing in about two hundred pounds a month. So it's not there yet, but it's it's definitely heading in the right direction. Got it. What do you think are your big plans uh, going? I mean, that's a great start because you know most I, I would say most solopreneurs uh, will start and ultimately end up making nothing and then they'll end up quitting. Um, what do you feel like are your plans to uh, grow that rapidly over the coming, you know, say 12 months? Okay, so with the new ad work, ad network I'm using, as my traffic builds, the income from that will build as well, which is great. Uh, my main focus for the rest of this year and, and probably ne into next year is content, content, content. The more content that's out there, the more doors into the website there are. And just to get more and more content that is useful and quality on the site, that's my main driver at the moment. Um, I'm also, I've been approached by one of the book publishers that I do reviews for to write a book for them, which is something that I'm just starting to do now. So we're, I'm writing a book on teaching. My son is autistic and I also teach autistic kids as part of my day, not exclusively, but I've got a lot of experience with it. So I'm going to write, I'm writing a book that is um, how to teach autistic children from both a father's perspective and uh, a teacher's perspective. So that's, that's a project that's going to be building over the next few months. So that hopefully will be another income stream. Um, and that's where we're at the moment. So building the traffic, building the site up, because I still view it as very new. I, I, you know, it's, I look at other comparable websites out there for the thing I'm doing, and, and they're massive. Um, so for me, it's building up that content, building up the back catalogue of stuff that I have there, and constantly tweaking what I'm what I'm doing. So the book, more content, and then working a bit on a bit of outreach, trying to get build build a bit more authority. They're, they're, that's my plan for the next year. You mean like backlink building? Yeah, that at that and. Um, getting the brand known so coming on podcasts like this and and so just building up my presence online For i sure. think is is where i want to be at the moment can you walk us through you know what does the you know day to day in your uh blogging business look like uh maybe if you could give us like a representative week what are the kinds of activities that you're doing to build up your site in your, in your domain authority and your content so we can just understand, like, when do you do the work? How, how much of the work do you do? Uh, and what is your, how do you break it up? What does your day-to-day -day actually look like for this? Um, yeah. So the first thing is it, it, it's not quick. There is a, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Any solopreneur or blogger out there knows that actually there's a lot of work. And that's why a lot, a lot drop off and, and quit after a short amount of time and they realize it's not overnight success. Um, for me, I don't actually have a backup plan, so I'm kind of committed to this. So for, I, 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 on a Monday to Friday, I'll get up at five o'clock in the morning, um, stumble to the kitchen, grab a cup of tea, and probably spend an hour and a half writing or writing or just doing some admin tasks on the blog before my family get up. Then I'll have breakfast with them and then go to work. Um, I might squeeze in a little bit of blog time during the day whilst at work if I've got some free time. And then when I get home, I'll probably work on it for a couple of hours in the evening, more if I'm trying to um, get a particular post out. But uh, yeah, so that, that's generally when I work. What I, I usually, Mondays and Fridays mornings is when I'll do my, my uh, sharing of posts on Twitter. I, I'm also on Twitter as well. That's another one I've just remembered. Um, on Twitter and Facebook. And then during the week, in the evenings, I'm working on blog posts and outreach. Outreach I try and squeeze into into my day at lunchtime and stuff like that, where I just send a few emails or contact a few people. That So at the, it's, there's, I don't have a very organized plan. Um, I've done plans and, and schedules for it before, but I prefer working when it's when it's all up here. I've got I use a, an app called Trello to keep up keep up with everything I've got to do, but I'll just dive in and pick things out that I think are more important at that time. 
But yeah, so gotcha. I try and get this. Yeah. So how do you stay up to date on, you know, making sure that you're up to date on, um, you know, the, the latest trends going on uh, in marketing, whether it's, you know, related to how Google is changing search results or Facebook is changing its algorithms. Are there uh, blogs or influencers or podcasts that you follow that you have found particularly valuable for this type of thing? Yeah, def- definitely. Um, my drive to work is always listening to podcasts. Um, I try and keep some spaces in the week for more entertainment podcasts, but the majority of them are marketing or blogging. Um, there are there's a guy called Pete, Mc, Pete McPherson who runs Do You Even Blog, which is a podcast and website. He he's very good, so I listen to him. And there's the blogging millionaire Brandon Gailey. Um, that's that's very helpful. And when it comes to uh, YouTube channels, there is Income School. They're very good. Two guys from. America, I'm not sure where they are, but two guys from America, and they're, they're really good talking about how they build their websites, and that's pretty cool. And then blog for blog posts, I, I my first port of call is always Brian Dean at Backlinko. Mm. Um, um, I, I, whenever I get his emails come through, um, yes, I need to get on there and read that. And he's, he's also got a YouTube channel. So they're the main ones. Neil Patel's um, website and podcast as well. And YouTube channel, but they're the main ones I go to. But there is a lot out there that are repeating the same stuff. So you got to kind of filter out what you think is quality and will work for you. But they're the ones I kind of stick to. Yep, those are some definitely some good ones. So when you sum it all up, what do you feel like are the biggest learnings that you have internalized uh, during your um, your entrepreneurial journey so far? What are the biggest lessons, the biggest takeaways? Or maybe um, maybe phrase it a different way. You know, if you could go back and talk to your earlier self or just when you were getting started, what are the things that you would want that what you know yourself to know? Um to start with, strapping, it's gonna be a long ride <laughs> rather than you're gonna be a millionaire tomorrow. That's the biggest learning thing. Um that it does take work. It's not it's not easy. To do you've got to be careful with your time you've got to take time for yourself as well because if you're doing this side hustle and a full-time job and you've got a family you need to make sure you've got your priorities right you've got to make sure that the full-time job is still going to be there um and and your family is still going to be there um so prioritize what is important to you and then start streamlining, streamlining the things that do work for you and try not to get distracted by every new thing that comes out. Work out what works for you, stick to that, and then constantly monitor it um, for, for any changes. So that, that pretty much that's the biggest learning curve for me was how to be a solopreneur rather than just someone writing a blog. Um, the other big thing that I heard early on was treat it like a biggest business from day one. If you want it to, to, to take care of you in the future, you need to treat it like a business to start with. And it seems kind of, to me, it seemed a bit fraudulent at the beginning for me to be thinking of this as a business when it was making no money and it was just a side project. Um, but if you do treat it like a business and not a hobby, you're going to take more care of it. You're going to make more advances um, than, than if you just treat it as a hobby. If you treat it as a hobby, then it's it's not going to work. You're going to end up quitting because it's not always fun. It's not always stress free. Um, but if it's a business and you you believe in it, then you're more likely to uh, to make a make a a success of it. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your you know insights and wisdom with us today, Paul. Where can people find out more about you and your you know your website and what you're up to? Okay, well, the website at teacherofsci.com or on Facebook. Uh, Facebook page is Teacher of Sci. Uh, Facebook group is Teacher of Sci Teaching Community. I think they are all got my logos all over them. Instagram, I'm Teacher of Sci. And on Twitter, I am Teacher of Sci 1 because someone beat me to the um, <laughs> I was I'm very late to join in for Twitter. All right. Well, I will definitely uh, uh, link to all those in the show notes. And uh, thank you so much again for taking the time to join us. And, um, you know, cheers and best of luck to, with everything. 
Thank you very much, Andrew. It's great to be here. Take Cheers. Care.